Welcome to a life-changing moment of truth, where the Word of God, through His man servant, Pastor Toya Demola, is handcrafted to heal, uplift, and bless you as you pay attention. God's Word comes shortly. Believe with all of your heart and stand a chance to testify. Stay connected. Uh, we've been talking about the law of success for some time now. I actually wanted to close it, but it kept on expanding. Uh, let it be known to you, no matter how spiritual a man or a woman may be, he wants to be successful. There is nobody who doesn't want to be successful. So the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is the gospel of success. It's the gospel of prosperity. It's the gospel of abundance. You need to understand that. When we're talking about prosperity, what comes to the mind of average individual? They are talking about money. Money is just a little fraction when we're talking about prosperity. The Bible says, what does he profit a man if he has all the money of the world, all the goodies of the world? And at the end of his life, he ended up in hell. It will be vanity upon vanity. None of us will end up in hell in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So there is nobody who does not desire to be successful. You want it for yourself. You want it for your children. I, I tell you, even your children want it for you. They don't want you to suffer. They don't want you to be in sorrow. So everybody wants success. And that is the reason why Jesus came to the world. He came to offer us two kinds of life. One here on earth and another one in heaven. The first one is abundant life here on earth. He said the thief, the devil, came to steal, to, you know, to kill and to destroy. He said, but I have come. Everybody say he came. He said, I have come that you may have life. What kind of life? Abundant life. So we need prosperity here. Prosperity in our health, in our soul, in our spirit, in our body. Someone who is not born again, no matter how sophisticated, no matter how educated he may be, in the sight of the almighty God, is a poor man because he's a dead man. And a living dog is better than a dead lion. That's what the Bible says. So you have to know Prosperity entails your spirit, your soul, your body, your family, your health, your pocket, everything. Success is very good. Somebody say success is very good. Because good success is from the Lord. He said this book of the Lord must not depart from your mouth. You must meditate in it day and now in order for you to observe what is written there. And when you do that, you will have good success. You make your way prosperous and you will have what? Good success. I pray for you. Good success is your portion in Jesus' name. And with everything God does in life, there is a law that attached to it. Laws. Think about it. Laws that apply to you. So, without wasting your time, in this particular service we've been talking about some of the laws we need to engage. We can't exhaust them. But the Holy Spirit keep on revealing it to us day by day. The first one we dealt with is the law of belief. You can call it the law of faith. The law of belief. The law of belief. If you don't believe prosperity, it will never happen. If you don't believe health, it will never happen. If you don't believe in salvation that Jesus had already paid for your salvation, it will never happen. So the law of belief, you need to believe that success is your heritage in Christ. Success is possible, success is attainable, and it is for me. Somebody say for me. Failure is not meant for you, and you will not fail. Failure is not meant for any of us, and we will not fail. So we come again, we talk about the law of cost and effect. If you want success, hey, God will do his own part. You must be ready to do your own part too. There cannot be any output without an input. So the price of success must be paid. And you have to pay it in full, and you must be ready to pay it in advance. 
There are some things you need to do now. You don't postpone it. Don't allow procrastination even to rob you of your miracle or your blessings. So the law of cost and effect. We talk about the law of expectation. That is number three. Whatever you expect, I tell you something, you have it. We talk about the law of attraction. The law of attraction, that is number four. What you want, wants you. If you want success and you are working towards it, it wants you. There is what they say. What you want, wants you. You need to understand that. You need to understand that if you want success and you are working towards it, you have it. There is no mystical about success. Let it be known to you. Success is not mystical. Help me to tell yourself, say, success in life is not mystical. When you see someone that is succeeding, don't look at them and say, oh, they are lucky people. Let it be known to you. No, they are not. They just know what to do. And they are doing it. Once you know what to do and you are doing it, you do what successful people are doing. You say what successful people are saying. You go to where successful people are hanging out. And as long as you commit yourself into it, I tell you, brother, it's only a matter of time. You will see success. I always, you know, this testimony just came to my mind now. I remember... When I was about to go to middle school, my mother would tell me, that's the, you know, one of the things I learned from my mother. You, and many of us, our parents told us that, especially those of us that are elderly here. You are going to school. You are going to boarding school now. Remember the son of who you are. How many of you remember that statement? It's very common. Remember the son of who you are. And I go to, you know, not college now, middle school. And I saw some guy rolling their shirts. Are you following what I'm talking about? The number one freedom at home, you know, from home rather, I began to roll my shirt too. And you know my position at that particular time. 40 students in class, 33 position. Red pen dominated the blue pen. But I came to my senses. The people that are taking first, second, third position, in the same class we are, the same teacher, not that they have any tutorial, not that they have any special lessons. All of us are in boarding school together. So what's the difference? I discovered that when we noise makers, when there are no teachers in class, during the, you know, no break, I mean, no, 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 no lecture, no nothing, we became noise makers. We are the one throwing chairs all around. And these people will just carry their book on the way to library. I say, eh, this is your secret. I joined them. I joined them from 33 position. It dropped to 10 position. Are you following? That's the second time. But thank God, first time, second time doesn't matter in those days. It is what you did in the promotion exam. From 10 position in the second time, it dropped to second position in the third time. Can you imagine? Just by observing people that are succeeding. So in your business, in your career, before you say someone is a lucky fellow or maybe they are using something. Somebody came to me the other time, ah, that sister is succeeding. We, you don't know what they are using. I said, how dumb are you? That's what I told her. I said, how dumb are you? If you know what they are using and you are in the same business, why can't you use it? Am I right? That's, that's normal. If you know what they are using that is making them successful in their business and you are in the same profession, why not use what they are using? So take the steps successful people are taking. Before you know what happened, you become successful. Somebody say amen to that. That is, that is about the law of attraction. Number five, we talk about the law of correspondence. I'm giving you, you know, I'm trying to recharge you. For you not to forget anything we have, we have studied. The law of correspondence. How do you see yourself? Until you begin to see yourself that I'm a success. I'm a successful individual. I cannot fail. Let that one dominate your heart. Whether you like Donald Trump or not. When I was you know, studying about this particular man. Because the Bible said go to the hand. Or use slogan. And learn from him. 
There are many things you can learn from. Forget about all those nonsenses. But the guy has solid mentality when it comes to success. It's a number one optimist, or optimist rather. Optimist. He doesn't think about failure at all. Some people have lost millions. They never recover. When he lost billions, he said, I'm coming back. The first time he came back, the second time he came back, you must begin to see yourself a success. Will you help me to tell your neighbor, say, I'm a super success. Say it louder. That is your mirror. Don't think, you don't need to have plenty of money in your pocket before you talk success. You don't need to have plenty of clothes before you dress success. You don't need anybody to tell you, speak success. Don't speak failure. Speak favor. Wherever I go, I am highly favored. I am favor soaked. If I don't want to be rich, what happened to me? Too late. That's part of the law of correspondence. Before you know what happens, you begin to see yourself becoming one. Somebody say amen to that. What is number six law? We talk about the law of discipline. The law of discipline. Hey, discipline is required. To my understanding, I've been saying it, everyone that is working, that is making here and there money, is a potential wealthy fellow. But if you lack discipline, you spend everything that is coming in. Many of us, the problem is because it's not that we are not making money. But what is going out is higher than what is coming in. And what are we doing? We are just buying things we don't need. Differentiate between your needs from your want. Discipline. Somebody say discipline. And then number seven, we talk about the law of persistence. What is persistence? Ability to keep on, you know, forging ahead. Forging ahead in spite of the result you are getting now. Because I know at the, you know, at the, you know, at the end, I will still break through. Life is a gold mine. Can you dig it? Life is what? A gold mine. Can you dig it? You cannot get gold on the surface. Perhaps you can settle for bronze. You can settle for silver. But if gold happens to be your ultimate goal, you dig deeper. Dig deeper. That is the law of persistence. You know, ability to face failure again and again without giving up until you touch what you are looking for. That was the story of Abraham Lincoln, one of the foremost American presidents. He faced defeat over and over, but he made up his mind. And those of you, you may not like the president of Nigeria now, but like I told you, you learn from the hand. This man called Buhari, whether you like him or not, is a job to be one of the presidents in your country, Nigeria, to those of you who came from that place. The first time he contested, he lost. The second time he lost. The third time he lost. But the fourth time, what happened now? He came in. Hey, maybe it's an arrangement. Let them do the arrangement for you too. He's a president now up to today. Amen to Jesus. The law of persistence. The law of persistence. Number eight, we began to talk about the law of diligence. That's where I want to go this morning. Diligent. Diligent. In the book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, Proverbs 22, 29, the Bible says, See it thou a man, diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, not before me men. Hold King James Version. Do you see a man who is diligent in his business? He will not be an ordinary man or woman. He will be a successful individual. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The law of diligence tells you that you must do something. Somebody say, I must do something. If you must fulfill destiny, you must continue to do something. Out of what you are doing, you gain experience. Even in the house of God, if you are just coming to the church doing nothing, I tell you something, you know, anointing will not flow. And I want you to understand, in the book of Amos chapter 6 verse 1, Amos chapter 6 verse 1, he said, Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. They are doing nothing. They are just there in the house of God. Is there a woe to you, you know, who are at ease in Zion? So you got to do something. Your life must be current. Somebody say amen to that. You must learn to do something. You are a business owner. Thank God. You are an employee. Thank God. But what are you doing? If you are a business owner and you subscribe to the law of diligence, I tell you something, that business will continue to expand. If you are a worker and you are working, tell me something, you'll be promoted. So, the law of diligence. The law of diligence. If your work does not stretch you, you, it cannot feed you. If your work does not stretch you, it cannot feed you. And it, you can't be an, you know, an impact or you cannot make an impact to your work. You need to understand. Because look at all the development. Now, many times, many of us, we go somewhere. We see problem there. They say, oh, they're supposed to have created a new road here. They're supposed to have built bridges here. They're supposed to have done the, who are the day? Who are the day? If everyone is doing that, they're supposed to, they're supposed to, who will do it? It should be we supposed to. We're supposed to do something here. So you need to make sure that the work you are doing stretch you. Somebody say stretch you. Before it can feed you. If you are in a business, you are not ready to suffer for that business. You are not ready to pay the price. Now, that business will not be important to feed you in the future. The reason why many people are running from, you know, post to post, or like they say, it's because they are expecting a bumper harvest immediately. It doesn't work like that. Let your work stretch you. I've told you many times in this place. Most millionaires and billionaires of our time, when they first start their business, they don't work 40 hours a week. Let it be known to you. They work more than that. If I sit down to calculate the numbers of hours I work in a week, you know, I'm not in the, I'm not in the 40 hours in a week. The minimum hour I work in a week is 13 hours, minimum. 13 hours, minimum. In a day. 13 hours, minimum. In a day. So, if I'm into it now, it can go to 15 hours. So why am I saying it? That is the secret of every successful businessman, businesswoman. Nothing works until you work it. Help me to tell your neighbor, you know, it's a common saying here. Nothing works. Somebody say nothing works. Until you work it. Luke chapter 12. Look at verse 49. He used the word straighten or stretch in the whole. He said, I came to send fire on the earth. Okay, you're there, right? And how, we, how I wish it were already kindled, but I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how strengthened or stretch I am till it is accomplished. It has to stretch me. I have a baptism to be baptized with. But I know nobody wants to do it, but I have to do it. It is the stretching of your work that impacts the world. You want your business to be a world-class business, you have to stretch. Somebody say, I have to stretch. 
To become highly successful in life, you can't do it without going through the labor room of diligence. Somebody say labor room. Labor room of diligence. If you want to be highly successful individual in your business, in your career, and in your ministry, you must pass through the labor room of diligence. Otherwise, your goal in life will become a daydream. John D. Rockefeller, the first American billionaire, hear what he said. He said, when work goes out of fashion, civilization with alter or fall. What is the meaning? He said, when war goes out of fashion, civilization will stumble and it will fall. When war goes out of fashion, there will be no new thing any longer. Are you following what I'm talking about? I used to make a joke that when I first came to this country, the most advanced nation on earth. There were no cell phones in those days. You can have pay phone, pay phone. The best technology at the time is beeper. How many of you remember beeper if you are here? You put it on this area of your, you understand now? We know women, we put it in their handbag. And you say, oh! Are you following now? And now you Remove it and you check who is calling me. And you are looking for a pay phone, 25 cent. You put it there. Pa, 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 pa. Now some people began to walk that it can be better off. The first, I remember the first cell phone I bought, maybe 1995 or 1996, is, is called Nextel. How many of you know Nextel? Now you have to drag this something over. <laughs> you understand? Huh? What is he talking about? Only few people can afford it at that time. Even go to the poorest country in the world today. You see market women using war, cell phone. Even some of us, we have parents who are not educated. Are you following what I'm talking about now? They have cell phone now. Somebody is working. Somebody say somebody is working. Thank you for worshipping with us today. For your offerings, tithes, special seeds, or CTMI partnerships, use the following methods. Pastors are available 24-7 to take your personal prayer request. Kindly call 832-3790517 or 832-723-0854. Or you can email us at info at dominionlifestyle.org. If you would like to share your testimonies, send them to testimony at dominionlifestyle.org.